Mm-hmm. Welcome to Diary of an Ex-Ho. I'm Sherry Hardman. I'll be your ex-ho. And today's guest is Kelly Zemnickis. She's a stand-up comedian from Toronto, Ontario. So sit back, enjoy the episode, and remember the old saying, always a bridesmaid when you're a hoe. Anyway, so I'm glad that you're here today. Thank you for having me. I always start out with a game of Mary Shag Kill. Okay. I try to cater it to the person. Sometimes it's hard. I notice that you have a, a cooking show. I do. Okay. I do. I have a, a food show on YouTube called It'll Be Fine. Um, yeah, I'm I'm a definite foodie. So if you've got some chefs in this mix. That is exactly what we have. Let's make it look <laughs> good. Ta-da. All right. So you have to pick which one you're going to marry, which one you're going to shag, which one you're going to kill. Okay. Oh, or boy. Okay. Tim Ramsey, Guy Fieri, Jamie Oliver. Um, huh. Oh, this is tough. Damn it. <laughs> okay. I've been a naked chef fan for Jamie Oliver. It's his first <laughs> food show for a while. Um, I think... I think I would marry Guy, I would shag Gordon, and I would take out Oliver. Oh, now why would you take him? Why would you kill him? I don't know who he is. So I am. So he's a, he's a British chef and he came out, I think in like the early 2000s with a TV show called The Naked Chef, which had like a very saucy title because he wasn't naked at all. It was just like right. the bare bones of what you need for food. Um, and I've heard through the grapevine of friends who have either worked or been in classes with both Gordon and Jamie, that Jamie's a bit of a jerk. So just oh. based on hearsay, I'm taking out Jamie. All, all right. Good to know. <laughs> yeah. All right. Let me have my notes ready for you. Nice so, lot. um, would you rather watch or be watched? Oh, be watched. Uh, I would be watched. I feel like if I was watching, I would I would laugh. <laughs> um, because I I'll be honest, I've never been to uh a like a sex club or a strip club. I've never been to one. Uh, the closest I've ever came to was uh watching Magic Mike. Right. Um, and I was in a tizzy. I was giggling so. <laughs> I loved it, but also I couldn't stop laughing. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Uh, now, I love me some Thunder from Down Under. I love it. Like, I go to Vegas. I've been to that show enough times mm -hmm. that I know which seat to request when I'm getting my tickets. Because it's when they oh, come down <laughs> off the stage, they run right past you every time. So, yeah, that's <laughs> kind of fun. But, uh, yeah, as for sex, I'd yeah. rather... I'd rather be the one being watched just because. Yeah. Most people, when I think of them having sex, grosses me out. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> you think it's like way hotter than it looks sometimes. <laughs> yeah. Uh, what did what your parents or whoever raised you call private parts? Um, <laughs> they, they probably... I say this as a woman who never had the sex talk from my parents, like just never. So they would say penis or vagina, like they're just going to call it what it is. Like there was no, there was no guidance into that part of my life from them. Um, <laughs> so how do you think your childhood affected your adult sex life? Oh man. Looking, looking back, like as somebody who, who never got that talk. So I don't really know if that sort of prepares you better for what to expect, but I kind of feel like they just ushered me out the door into figure it out for yourself. And if you have a question, uh, we'll give you someone to call. Uh, so I think, I think uh, had I been given a talk or better explanation as to like, you know, what sex is all about and how you may feel afterwards and who you may desire. I think 
I might have made some better choices because there's certainly people that when I think back, I'm like, oh yeah, we had sex. I'm like, fuck, why did I do that? So, <laughs> <laughs> my list of regrets would be lower. <laughs> well, I think a, a, a lot of parents, even if they gave people the biological sex talk, never gave them the like actual mechanics or emotional sex talk. I don't think. Yeah. I don't know. Yeah, no. I, I doubt it. And being a child, being a, you know, a kid who grew up in the 80s, uh, came into the world in the 70s, grew up in the 80s, it was sort of like, there you go. Yeah. <laughs> Just <laughs> be home for dinner, you know. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, were your parents like physically affectionate with you? Oh, no. I mean, they're not like cold people, but um, I, I I grew up in a home where um, <laughs> I just said they're not cold people, but a, a handshake uh, is probably a little bit more common than, than a big bear hug. I didn't grow up in a home where, you know, that was, yeah, there was really no physicality of like. Uh, did did you see your parents like hug each other and stuff? Sometimes. I'm probably going to end up sending this podcast to my therapist, Sherry. <laughs> well, I, I like, I like to ask these kind of questions just for yeah. my own. So I can go later like, well, this is why she did that. And he did that. It was like, absolutely. Uh, I like to think that way, you know, I don't think yeah. we're all just, you know, uh, <laughs> there's reasons for things that we do. Um, 100%. Yeah. Yeah, I mean they're they're a very tight pair. Like they've been together for uh they're they're in their 56th year of of being a couple. So um I can't imagine one without the other. Mm -hmm. Um but but physicality I really didn't see. And well, there's nothing that. wrong with how you grew up and what worked for them yeah. worked for them. So yeah. Um all right. Mm -hmm. So now I want to ask about what I call sexual awakening. Like when you first started to notice there's something going on in this world that I didn't notice was going on before, whether it was changes in your body or whether it was stuff that you observed. Can you tell me mm -hmm. about that? Yeah. Um, my, uh, my first, like, uh, I think the first time, like, I felt like something for a guy. And I had a crush. There's this one guy throughout most of my school experience from, like, grade school up until college. There was this one guy named Todd, uh, who I just, I thought the moon of. But, like, feeling things in areas and parts of me uh, was a guy named Craig, who I befriended. He worked at a TV station in Toronto. I was probably about, like... 16 when I met him and uh that was that was like oh what does this do if you know there's like a brush against as part of my body like mm. actual like connecting with a guy was was him yeah <laughs> yeah and it was it was quite I remember just feeling quite surprised of oh you know, it's not just having like a crush and wanting to see you, you know, a, a day from now. It was like actual wanting a physical uh, there is, touch. There is power in that energy that goes between two people sometimes. Oh, yeah. Uh. Yeah. <laughs> yep. Um, yeah. <laughs> did you have any celebrity crushes when you were younger? I did. I did. And this might explain why I tend to skew for guys who are older than me. Uh, but my first two celebrity crushes, uh, Bob Barker, host of The Price is Right. Second guy, uh, John Davidson, uh, who was- Oh, he was I, so handsome, yeah. <laughs> so handsome. Oh my goodness. Was it Real People or That's Incredible, the show he was on? I can't remember. But he also hosted Hollywood Squares. He had a talk show. I was enamored. Oh my gosh, he was so handsome. <laughs> He really was, but he also seemed like one of those people that would have like a Ken doll genital thing going on, you know, like, I don't know, just too perfect to have a penis. I don't know. <laughs> His hair was coiffed like Ken. <laughs> like, 
So was the guy <laughs> was the guy that worked at the radio station older? Yeah, he was. Yeah, he was about 10 years older than me. Um, and I I just came to know him from uh, the station that we had, uh, like akin to uh, MTV, but they made it a lot more um, accessible for fans of the bands who were coming by or maybe fans of the VJs, you know, the people you'd watch on the shows for you to interact with them. And so it was not uncommon to run into him on the corner downtown because they were shooting something. And just after some time, because this is way before, you know, even like uh, AOL chat kind of things, right. um, you just got to know people, right? So yeah, it was, um, yeah, it was, it was easy to to go down and, and hang out and get to know him and, and get to be on TV on occasion sometime myself, so. <laughs> I, I don't know, but I think it's it's a little more exciting to pe to meet people like organically rather than internet stuff. It just seems to take that element out of it of excitement, you know. I don't know. Absolutely, I agree with you because I think you can put on. Uh, well, I don't think. I mean, you do put on a sort of layer when you have that barrier between actually being in the same room you mm -hmm. can allude to maybe a side of yourself that you haven't totally explored yet but then when you get in person you're like eh, it was just words <laughs> right right <laughs> you know? so, all right yeah. um and what, what's your status now are you single married or what i'm dating uh i've been in a long distance relationship now for two years we just celebrated uh, our two-year anniversary um i met my boyfriend in a zoom meeting uh oh. at the height of lockdown <laughs> and <laughs> um we met in april of 2020 and got to know each other over a couple of years and then actually met in person in march of 2022 so uh we became a couple a little bit before we met we were just talking every single day mm -hmm. and sort of figured out we were in a relationship so yeah no, that's cool <laughs> yeah yeah so he's in brooklyn new york and i'm in toronto so how far is that like a uh, drive it's about eight hours if all goes well on highways um but with a flight it's under an hour so um, right. We try to we try to see each other. The longest we'll go is about two months without seeing each other. But we talk every single day. So. Do you remember any like mainstream movie, like a scene in a mainstream movie that um, always kind of did it for you? Yeah, actually, um, Top Gun, uh, the original Top Gun movie. I uh, it was Kelly McGillis, right? Yes, I'm, t I'm terrible with names, but uh, the that character Kelly uh, and Tom Cruise, um, when there's just like they're in shadow and she is just licking him up and down while they're playing "Take My Breath Away," yeah. To this day, it's like that's sexy. <laughs> I never saw Top Gun, so I don't I don't know that, but yeah, I love that movie. Oh, when Tom Cruise was cute in the day he was cute he was cute yeah. mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. uh do you watch <laughs> porn um not a lot no I, I, on the rarest of occasions i will now but during lockdown when like the city of toronto we were under one of the the tightest restrictions on the planet we were we were up there with how restrictive it was to see people so i started googling um porn to you know got out the vibrator and like i gotta do something right, right. um so <laughs> that i watched the most um i don't think i'd ever prior to 2020 had logged on to pornhub i mm -hmm. i really hadn't um but uh yeah there was there was uh, a a healthy amount of viewing um <laughs> I bet sure. that was very common. I bet the everything, the porn industry probably oh, really skyrocketed at that point. It probably did. And I remember when we were as a city allowed, uh, we had we had people in like, you know, you could add people to your bubble. 
Uh, so it's like, okay, you've only been with so-and-so and so-and-so. Um, the guy I had been dating prior to lockdown, um, we got together and um, you have not seen two happier people to have sex. Like, <laughs> like <laughs> there was so much <laughs> I used to tell people, well, you know, you could just go like uh, bend over and put your rear end out the sliding glass door and somebody could come around. the. <laughs> I, if I'm not mistaken, uh, the West coast of Canada, the uh, province we have, British Columbia, I do believe their health minister was advocating for um, glory holes. Oh. Uh, <laughs> sex safely during the pandemic. <laughs> I okay. guess they were watching a lot of like Dick in a Box yeah. videos from SNL. <laughs> <I'm not sure. laughs> uh, what's your definition of amazing sex? Um, where your legs are shaking and you just feel like exhausted and euphoric and you just feel good, like yeah, haven't felt before. You know, <laughs> I think when there's, I think when you have that like leg shaky just relaxed but excited that's you just mm -hmm. like ding. <laughs> yeah that's good how's your body image um it's a work in progress it is certainly a work in progress i'm a gal who is in her late 40s and still struggles with um liking what i see but i took some time towards the end of 2023 to really like give myself a good like talking to of you you can't keep judging yourself as badly as you do and, and seeing myself as sexy it's something my boyfriend says to me and I hear the words and I know what they mean mm -hmm. but I'm trying to like get what he's saying it's tough I beat my I berate myself like a ton um and I hate that, um, but I've never not done that. And I, I don't like that about me, you know, so. I think, yeah, that, I think that's very common in women. Like I look at pictures of myself when I was in my early twenties, I was beautiful. Yeah. You know, I was just a little thick. Yeah. I was cute. And I thought I was so fat, you know, yep. and yeah. I look at them just like if I would have appreciated that. And then same with my forties now. There comes a time, and for me, it's it was right at about 60, because I'm mm -hmm. 62 now, where there's another just horrible leap in aging. Like, all of a sudden, yeah. volume goes out of your tits, you know? <laughs> like, they're not just hanging now. Now they're just, like, empty, almost. Uh, <laughs> no. I mean, really, I, I, I appreciate mm -hmm. your, and I'm sure when I'm 80, I'm going to go, man, you remember how full my tits were back when I was 60, you know, so. Oh, oh it's, it's so, it's so aggravating. Cause like uh, a picture came up in a Facebook memory of me in New York about 20 some odd years ago. And I know that the girl in that picture thought, oh, there's something you could do better. There's something you could mm -hmm. do better. And I looked at it and I was like, you're a babe, mm -hmm. you know, shut up. Right. <laughs> Yeah. yeah, so young women watching this, love, learn to love your body. Yeah. yeah. If you don't know how, find out how. Go see a therapist or something. Yeah. Um, well, you've already answered this one. Mm -hmm. uh, if you have any sexual regrets. <laughs> no, I've had a few. Anything else that comes to mind? Um, I, I regret some choices I made. Um, knowing that I didn't really care for the guy uh it was just out of young boredom um and uh also I think just out of a lack of liking this girl uh <laughs> you know yeah just was like yeah okay you're paying attention to me um a lot of like self bad self-esteem led to some mm -hmm. men who I had horrible sex with uh, <laughs> yeah but i'm not going to judge myself for it it right. happened whatever um but uh but yeah it would be it would be nice um 
if I could go in a time machine and be like, just tell them you have to go. Just, just leave. <laughs> this is going to be. Did happen. you ever have <laughs> sex with someone just to get them to go home? Oh, yeah. And leave you alone. Okay. <laughs> I can't be friends with anyone that says no to that question. No. <laughs> You're lying if you say no to that question. <laughs> and the guys knew it too. They're like, I'm just going to be as annoying as hell. So she just does it. Yes. Oh my goodness. I remember I when I was on uh, one of the dating apps, I got a note from a guy who said, hey, I'm I'm a virgin. Um, can I come over and you teach me things? And I was like, I did that's a hard no, buddy. No, <laughs> I'm, I'm a busy lady. <laughs> uh, do you have anything left on your sexual bucket list? Um, gosh, <laughs> I've had sex in a car. I've had sex in a public place. <laughs> um, I, I mean, I've got friends who have been like talking more of late and I've known comedians who have been doing shows of late, especially like in the Toronto area at sex clubs. Um, as a gal who's never been to a strip club or a sex club, I think that might be on it. Because mm -hmm. <laughs> um, yeah, I've just never, no one's, uh, I've, I've never been invited and I've never thought to go by myself. So yeah, probably that. Okay. What will probably happen, or this is what happens to me, when mm -hmm. I've gone to a sex club, just I've done shows in sex clubs, mm -hmm. and then I look around and they're like, hmm, there's nobody here I want to have sex with. <laughs> so <laughs> then you can still check it off your bucket list, you know? I guess so. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. What, what is your Instagram? My Instagram is the Latvian foodie and Latvian is L-A-T-V-I-A-N, then foodie, F-O-O-D-I-E, but on YouTube and Facebook uh, and uh, X, formerly Twitter, uh, it's uh, Kelly Zemnikas, so. Okay, all right. <laughs> um, this is going to come out, I think it should be either the last Wednesday of February mm, or the or the very first no la, last uh, what month are we in right now we're still in January, <laughs> <It's> January. Yeah. <laughs> yeah so yeah. it's gonna be yeah. the, uh, like the first part of February so do you have anything cool. um certain that you want to promote for, for that uh sure coming up in February um I will be at uh the comedy nest in Montreal on February 23rd and 24th um, and, uh, my boyfriend who is also a comedian, uh, Adam Gable will be on the bill too. So if you're in Montreal, definitely come by and check that out. And then, uh, yeah, there's going to be some travel in March, uh, down to uh, the church of satire in Hanover, Pennsylvania. That is one of the coolest clubs I've ever been to. Really? And, um, they're the, they're the snack capital of the world. That's where you get your chips and your pretzels from. Oh. People. <laughs> cool. Yeah. All right, now we come to the time where it's your turn to just tell me a, an entertaining story that has something to do with sex somehow. For well, sure. So um, as many people did uh, during during lockdown, um, or even maybe before lockdown, I don't know, but the virtual sex experience, like getting on a Skype and having, having a sexy call with, with someone... Um, so there was a guy I had been talking to on a dating app and he's like, why don't we just, you know, have a, you know, a, a date online. And, uh, it got, you know, to a point where we were like taking clothes off and like showing each other things and what have you. And, um, it was late at night, but not, a, you know, not crazy late, it was later. And, uh, the asshole fell asleep. Fell asleep. I knew he wasn't dead because like I saw like breath I saw the stomach go up down. and then um it was on uh it was on Skype the call was on Skype and uh his camera went off and I just got a how would you rate your call <laughs> uh, I was like not well Skype <laughs> that's a boo <laughs> <laughs> you weren't mid strip or anything when he fell asleep were you 
Oh, I was. Oh, oh, I was. Yeah. And he was out. I, there was, um, yeah, he was, I, uh, he was, uh, he was asleep. Um, I, yeah, it's, it's one thing I think to, uh, to have someone fall asleep with you during it. Uh, and that has happened to me, but I am, I am over a certain age now. So it's, it can happen friends. You can fall asleep when you're masturbating. It can happen. Um, but it just added another layer to it to be on a call and see how would you rate your call? <laughs> oh. Now, you know, I mean, I, I can relate because I've got sleep disorders and I, I fall asleep at like in the middle of intercourse a lot. Yeah. Yeah, cause because you're so relaxed. I, it is. And so I, I've told my husband, just keep going. It's okay. I don't care. You know? Sometimes I'll even just ask them to have sex with me just to help me go to sleep. <laughs> Terrible. And, and, I think he takes it, and I don't think he takes it personally, you know, so yeah. try yeah. not to take it personally, but he probably has a, some, something going on, but <laughs> I feel you. all right. It's been great talking to you. A lot of fun. This has been awesome. Thank you so yeah. much. And, um, you have like 24 hours to decide that you shouldn't have said something. You want me to take it out. <laughs> I'm good. <laughs> okay. It happens every now and then. So, you know, I, 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 I can imagine it takes me about 24 hours to edit. So, okay. All right. Well, thank you. Sounds good. Thanks, Sherry. Right. I hope you feel better. Oh yeah. I'm yeah. just, yeah. all right. Bye. <laughs> Bye. <laughs> See ya.